Thank you very much. I'm going to share my screen with you all, but I thought I'd say the face-to-face -face hello before <laughs> we move into this presentation. Okay. So working together to bring reproductive justice. By the way, thank you all. I know it's late in the day, so thank you for waiting for me. So <clears throat> I'm Mars Lord, as you've heard. I'm a birth activist, a life coach, a doula trainer and um, educator. I'm going to give you a quick run through the things that I do and why I do them. And as I close, we'll be asking for your involvement and how you can help with these things. So abuela doulas, abuela being Spanish for grandmother, because I believe in bringing the wisdom of the grandmothers into modern birth. I train birth doulas, postnatal doulas, um, do advanced doula training, etc and offer mentoring for all of the doulas that come through Abuela doulas. I do collaborative work with red tent doulas. So we're Abuela's red tents where we bring cultural competency workshops. And I'll qualify that by saying that cultural competency is the absolute base minimum level that you or anyone should be at. We also run a workshop talking about the racist roots of obstetrics and gynecology, and we run international doula training courses. Uh, for those that, that want to know, and because the slide looked pretty, I've been featured in Channel 4, BBC News, BBC Seem to Like Me, BBC Radio London, Woman's Hour, Glamour magazine just recently, and I'll tell you why, not just because I'm gorgeous, and I've uh, presented twice for Gold Learning. It would be lovely if you uh, tagged me on Twitter or Instagram to particularly with the things that I'm going to share about the projects that I'm working on, because they are true practical steps towards doing something to uh, close the gap in maternal uh, mortality and morbidity, which is something we don't speak about enough. Mm. So the EMBRACE study, what the EMBRACE study has shown us, and we have to remember that the EMBRACE study lags behind. So the information that you are getting is already out of date, a uh, uh, sort of few years old. But what the EMBRACE study has shown us is that black and brown parents are most likely at risk. So when I first became a doula, about 16, 16 and a half years ago, I discovered that black women were twice as likely as white women to die in the perinatal period. And I'm not going to talk about the babies, but the babies are more than twice as likely to die within their first year of birth. Asian babies, in fact, are at 60% greater risk. So when I started out as a doula and first started to notice what was going on with black and brown people, black women were twice as likely as white people to die in the perinatal period. So I remember buying a T-shirt from the States because this was something that was being talked about a lot in the States, but not over here in the UK. And my T-shirt said that black women were three to four times more likely to die. By the time it arrived, we had hit the five times more likely. So some of you are thinking, well, I've seen the recent reports, Mars, and what the recent reports are saying is that black women are only four times more likely, so surely things have improved. But things to consider when we look at that, the qualification of race has been changed. And we do know that if the ethnicity isn't recorded or unknown, the Caucasian box is ticked. So there will be people who are hidden away in these figures. What we do know as an absolute definite, whether we quibble on the figures or not, is that black women are at higher risk. The Embrace report itself states that though the figures are now 4.35 times more likely, the reduction is a non-significant reduction. So let's think about why they say that black mums and their babies are dying. Some of you will have heard me talk about this before, so it will be a refresher. Others won't have heard this, and some will think, well, it's because of 
and these will be the reasons that I list. So what we're told is that black women are more likely to die because they are predisposed to particular conditions. Black women are more likely to die because their bodies somehow don't work as well. And that's known as eugenics because the study of eugenics, which was started by um, a British uh, scientist, says that white bodies are superior to black bodies. Two things to consider. How can that hypothesis be true within maternity that several extra layers of melanin means that you are at risk of death? Something else to consider, black and brown people are the global majority. So if our bodies were as weak, then obviously we would be the global minority. So let's think some more about, um, about why we do nothing. When we discovered that women who smoked had lower birth weight babies, what we did was we educated the families, the healthcare pro professionals, the community, the world. When we discovered that laying babies on their back when they went to sleep reduced the incidence of sudden infant death by 75% in one year, we made sure that everybody knew about it. When we decided that black women are predisposed to cardiac issues, hypertension, obesity, etc., and obesity, incidentally, is measured on the um, white Eurocentric model of what good weight looks like. We said that we needed to do more research. So I've just come away from the um, inquiry into maternal health inequalities. And we know that the research has been there for years, but perhaps the research isn't being utilized and used. So then we move to socioeconomics. Well, we know that statistically, black and brown families are more likely to be at the lower to the bottom end of the socioeconomic scale. But studies also show us, and again, this study has come from the States because we're not quite ready to admit that racism works in the same way here in the UK, um, that a white woman with no education and no money does better than a black woman with a university education and a middle class, upper class lifestyle and finances. And the last thing is the lack of education. We don't know what to eat. We don't know the classes to go to, but of course, why would we go to the classes when the vast majority of the imagery shows white babies? And when we talk about things, we talk about do you notice a redness? Do you notice that? And all of the parameters go straight back to the default, default equaling normal, normal equaling white. Serena Williams completely debunks this. Serena Williams is a top class athlete with a very healthy body. She's incredibly rich and really rather intelligent, speaks in many different languages. But she wasn't listened to when she was the day after her daughter was born, knowing that she had a history of pulmonary embolism and explaining that she knew what she was talking about, she had to really push until somebody finally listened, gave her a CT scan and the heparin drip because they found that she had three blood clots in her lungs. So she would have died that day. If someone as well-known and for want of a better phrase as articulate someone like Serena who can advocate for themselves because they have the socio-economic power etc behind them isn't hurt then what for those of us mere mortals who are simply just living our lives so the response of the birth world and possibly probably maybe some of you too as defensiveness. Oh my goodness, how can you say this thing? There's, there's no way I'm doing this work because I care about people. I can't possibly be racist because look at the, the world I'm working in. Is anyone in talking about these things, is anyone calling you specifically, you 
personally racist? Or are they talking about the system and the structure? And you work within the system, but it doesn't mean that they're talking about you personally. So the question to ask is, why do I feel so defensive about this? The next thing that happens is, but what about white women? Well, what about this community of people? Well, what about that community of people? In the same way that when we say Black Lives Matter, the wrong answer is all lives matter. If, remember this, that if all lives mattered, we wouldn't have to say that Black Lives Mattered because all lives would genuinely matter. I was at a conference. I was actually a, a listening rather than an attendee, sorry. And the title was Black Maternal Mortality. And a senior NHS midwife, without uh, any form of etiquette, politeness, etc., grabbed the microphone and demanded to know what about white women when the conference was very specifically about black maternal death. And then, of course, for some people, there's a complete lack of awareness, lack of awareness as to what the Embrace report says. And the Embrace report is simply one of the ways we've discovered what's going on. Lack of awareness because they work maybe in an area where there's only a tiny percentage of black and brown people. But let's stop looking at the percentage and find out what that percentage translates to in numbers. I think your opinions might change when you realise that two or three percent could be 10 or 20,000. Let's look at the black midwife. So does having a black midwife help? Well, most studies show that having a black midwife, a black doctor, does increase a black or brown person's chances of survival and thriving and doing well. For a lot of black midwives, they are not able to behave in that way. They are more likely to have complaints lobbied against them by people that are in labor. I don't want to be seen by that one, by their own colleagues. Well, she was being aggressive. Well, she was being bullying because she didn't agree with me. I know a senior Asian midwife who despite being uh, quite high and being management has has colleagues who won't sit in the same room as her or won't listen to her in meetings. Black midwives are far more likely to be referred to the NMC etc and and to be suspended from work. White midwives um, on the contrary if they are referred to the MNC etc are more likely to be struck off showing the severity of the complaint against the white midwife compared to the lack of severity, the negligible complaints about black midwives. This isn't me saying that black midwives never do anything wrong, but do be aware of how they're treated. So we look at the microaggressions from colleagues, which I touched on briefly, and consider how many black midwives are at band seven and above. When at work, they're expected to work harder, even though they're criticized for less. They don't get breaks whilst their white colleagues are prioritized. These are things that were told to me by midwives just recently. So this isn't a, just a historical thing. Given the hardest complexity person on the board, whilst their white colleagues will sit and drink coffee, they're less likely to be given funding or time for professional development and fear of repercussions. They have a fear of repercussions when they speak up to management. So with all of this that I'm doing, here's the work that I do now. Birthing in Colour is a free online antenatal resource for black and brown people only. The facilitators, the practitioners are all black and brown to keep this safe space. I mentioned Abuela's Red Tent. I'm a trustee at Birthrights. I'm actually a trustee as well at the Ialanthi Midwifery Trust, which has enabled them to look at the way we take in applications and score the applications for midwifery awards, meaning that more black and brown midwives have it available to them as well. Play the race card is a practical um, tool that I developed with three others. And it reminds you simply to look at the person that you're talking to and acknowledge the, the prejudices, prejudices there to remember who they are, to stop 
and examine your internal bias, etc., and to wonder what you're doing to stop them from feeling isolated. A very quick example, when they are in, when English isn't the first language and an interpreter is in and you give a 15 minute appointment for the mum, for the birthing person who has an interpreter in the room, their appointment is halved because half the time is spent talking to the translator and having the translator refer it back. So consider making notes and expanding their appointment times. And Black Mums Matter Too is a campaign that you can follow on Twitter and Instagram, where we're recruiting 200 Black Mums for 12 and Mums-to-be for 12 weeks of expert support via an app so that we can see if we can make a dent with digital solutions. So... I would love it if you were to follow them and share because at the moment we close applications on Friday and so far only 120 at the last count black mums have been eligible. Unfortunately, this is funded by NHS England. So it's mums, black mums in England, but do share amongst everyone you know because you don't know who knows who. And I mentioned play the race card. I'm quite happy actually for you all to have the slides so that you can read these again. So what about you? So in return for the information that I've sort of whistle stopped toward you through, I ask that you take one action yourself. What might that action be? It might be doing some research. Please don't go and find your black or brown colleague and ask them to give you um, evidence or personal experience of racism and trauma or your clients because there's plenty of that google is in this instance your friend so there's plenty of evidence of that all over the place so look to educate yourself start to read start to think start to think about why you feel defensive or why you don't think some of these things are important ask yourself why because as midwives, you have, your job is to love people. So take an action, decide your action. And then once you've done that, you can do another, educate yourself, amplify the black and brown voices, use your privilege and your platform to stand aside for someone else so that their voices can be heard. I also ask that you stop and you think that you ask questions and you examine your own bias. And I use the word bias to keep you all listening in because actually the hard truth is there is a lot of racism there it's not enough to be non-racist swimming in a pool of racism you have to be anti-racist actively working against racism and I say that because when we treat the least well everybody benefits some agents of change that you might like to think about Student midwives, midwives and doctors in this picture who are all working to close the gap. It's important that you remember that black women and their babies deserve to thrive, not just to survive. Black mums matter too. Play the race card. The, re the reason we chose that name is because when someone black or brown speaks up, everyone says, well, look at you playing the race card. Well, I invite you to play the race card with us and use it to remind you as to why the person in front of you deserves grace and dignity in the perinatal period. It's not enough that we survive. The floor shouldn't be our benchmark. We should be able to survive. Um, before I leave you, I want you to know that I am greatly encouraged, greatly encouraged by the work of different midwives of all ethnicities. Student midwives I'm especially um, proud of because they do like to ask the tricky questions. You can't expect the black and brown midwives to ask the questions because as I showed you very quickly earlier, they're more likely to be complained against. So use your voice. You give me hope and you give me hope because you invite people like me to come and talk to you and that you take note and that you listen. So 
please take some positive actions. Um, I make no money from either of those projects, Black Mums Matter 2 or Play the Race Card, which is why I'm sharing them with you. But I really do appreciate your time, your attention and listening, because I'm sure it's been a very long day for you. You have, you can be in touch with me any way you like. Please don't share stories of racism. I'm 53. I've lived through many of them. But do follow me on social media. Do tag me. And mostly, just do the work. Don't be afraid to get it wrong. If you get it wrong, simply hold your hands up and say sorry without the full explanation as to why your intentions were good, et cetera, et cetera, and move on. You are wonderful people who are learning wonderful things. And I know that the reason you are in midwifery is because you love people. So I ask that you love all people and that together, we start to work. You get to use your privilege and voice. You get to amplify other voices. We join together to make a change because we know that a rope, which is many strands of string, is much stronger than a single strand of string. So thank you so much for my um, short time with you all. But I do, I do genuinely believe in you and things will change because you want them to change. Thank you so much, Mars. That's a, I think that's a, a kind of um, a good a good ending piece. And thank you for kind of highlighting the issue so clearly. I think issues. I mean, people are always uncomfortable with feel, as though they could possibly feeling buzzed, but I mean, we all carry it of some sort, and we just need to be, I think, all aware of our own personal biases. And, and I think the the issue is that the fighting racism, not just keeping quiet about it and I think that that's quite a difficult challenge actually Marge you've left us because that's quite uncomfortable where you have someone who's mouthing off and you you know there might be a friend of yours or someone you know or a neighbor or whatever and it might feel very uncomfortable to say actually you can't say that that's not acceptable it's quite you know challenging for all of us yes and but i'm sorry, not saying we shouldn't do it yeah sorry <laughs> suddenly drilling next door and and something something to consider for those and i do and i heard exactly what you were saying soon really appreciate it when you think that you feel uncomfortable in this maybe think about me mm -hmm. i've been uncomfortable for 53 years mm -hmm. so you can perhaps be uncomfortable in that moment or that hour mm -hmm. but yeah, so we're not going to be handing out cookies, but I tell you, we see and we remember. <laughs> no cookies. And we are, we are grateful for those of you that stand up, particularly in the private spaces. People are very good in the public space, but in the private space, that's where we truly appreciate you more. Oh, my goodness, that's bad timing. We do have, we have got a couple of questions. Well, this Avril Flynn says, excellent presentation. We individually need to be all vocally anti-racist -race, and collectively address these terrifying inequalities. Absolutely. And then we have Mari, who says, Mars, brilliant talk. I agree. Every word is true. Black midwives are still going through all what you talked about. The biggest evidence, even all these lecturers are by white midwives. Well, not all of them, because we've we've had Mars. We've also had someone else who is is of color. Um, what I would say, actually, is I would love more black midwives to come forward and present papers. I really would like to. But if you don't submit, it's harder to to collect people. But we're addressing this actively. I must say, because it is it's important for me that the midwifery kind of conferences, festivals, study days, whatever, reflect our population of midwives who, and we have many black midwives, black, I should say black and brown and women of colour and men of colour, um, and the women that we care for and their babies and families. So we need to kind of address it. And we've been very slow to, to do it. And I'm speaking collectively, but we, we are working on it. So... We're doing our best. Mari, we're doing our best. And Margaret Richardson, this is a question. Mars, what research is needed in order to reduce morbidity and mortality for black women? 
Or perhaps how can we ensure that research studies focus on women from a BAME background? First, I love your question. Please stop using BAME. BAME, uh, yeah, I know. Black, black people don't like BAME. Oh. And, um, but I hear your question. We've got lots of research. The research is there going back decades. What I'd like you all to do is start asking the professors, the supervisors, the midwifery colleges, the education, ask them what they're doing to put this on the curriculum. Ask what they're doing to ensure that we're, you're not just taught, everyone's not just taught to look on white skins. So the questions, the research that you're thinking about, it's there. So ask them, tell me what the research says. Why aren't we looking at these things within the research? And now that we've got that, what can we do to make a difference? But that's a fantastic question. And I really hope that everyone continues to question why things are. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Mars. I think we'd better end it there as your drilling has taken over. Thank you so much for coming and giving us such a, a, a really challenging, thought-provoking and over, over, I mean, it's just needed. It was just needed. And thank you so much. My pleasure. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> the drilling has now taken over. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you, Mars. Okay.